Hello and welcome to Mentor Minds' new episode with Kun Pam Ponprapati Rativat, who is the founder of Dragonfly 360, Parachute and uh, director of Parachute, Sia Motors, and Yamaha Group. Uh, thank you so much for making time to uh, be on the podcast today. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your background? Yeah. So it's a pleasure, Krish. Uh, thanks for inviting me to be on this podcast. Um, so my name is Pam Pornprapachiratuat, like you said, and I work in a number of uh, fields. I'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur. So we have everything from fashion retail to automobiles to music to, um, I guess, what really is my baby, um, a gender equality platform called Dragonfly 360 that you mentioned, uh, definitely started as a passion project and has become kind of a beast on its own, if you want to call it that. And um, like everything, I think I compared to babies, anything that's grown, you can kind of let it grow on its own. So my family businesses, we've been around for 68 years. Um, so they run I, I I do a very high level management on that area because we have a staff of like 150 for Yamaha. CM Motors has over 2,000 staff, whereas um, something like Dragonfly is more in an, in an infant stage. I'd say it's about two years old. And so it needs more care and direction as to where it's supposed to go. That's awesome. So given your wide experience of diverse, um, uh, like different industries, um, yeah. seeing all these different industries like Yamaha, Parachute, and uh, also the Siam Motors Group, where mm -hmm. did you find the need for gender equality in the workplace? Did it sprout mm -hmm. from there for you to start uh, Dragonfly mm -hmm. 360? Or where, where, what do you see in those industries that had a need for this project? So... Definitely CM Motors. I'm not sure if you're aware. It's a manufacturing, mostly manufacturing partnership company. I call it a triple threat because A, we're a family business that is predominantly Chinese background. So Chinese Thai family business. And um, that's there is a tendency there to be more male dominated anyways. Um, I'm in an automobile manufacturing company, also very male dominated, if you can imagine. And the third is we are, CM Motors is mostly joint ventures with Japanese companies. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about brands such as Nissan, Daikin, Komatsu, uh, JC, uh, NSK, Kayaba, Bearing. So 85% of our companies are joint ventures with Japanese. Mm -hmm. And if um, you're aware of the Japanese culture, they are also extremely male dominated. Mm -hmm. So I call them the th uh, triple threat, which has caused me to grow up with um, an experience even in my working life, mostly men. I'm usually the only woman in the room. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I think um, that whole, that whole uh, experience growing up has has allowed me to understand the challenges that women face more because I personally went through them. And um, as a result, I wanted to just spread the word and let everybody understand that it's not always easy and you kind of go out of balance and you you experience a lot of um, sexism without yeah. knowing it. You kind yeah. of don't really, you just kind of get through it. But then when you think back and you say, wait, that wasn't really right. And how can we, what can we do to shift it and make it better for the gener the next generation. Wow, that's amazing. Because definitely the male dominated fields um, are like, as you said, you're probably in the most male dominated fields. And it's really nice to see this movement. So as this is a podcast for the youth and aspiring youth entrepreneurs, what would you what is your best advice you would give to uh, young female uh, aspiring entrepreneurs who are uh, looking to pursue in their entrepreneurial endeavors, um, what would you say is the biggest thing for them to look at when they are in this male-dominated field of um, various industries? I mean, I can speak from my own experience, what, what I did wrong. And I think that's the only way you really learn is when you reflect on what you did wrong. And for me, I tried to be one of the boys. So I tried to really fit in. Um, and as a result, the traits that are strong for women, which are like collaboration, communication, empathy, all those traits, I just threw it out the door. And I almost like became 
I tried very hard to be to fit in. And mm-hmm. so my biggest advice there, and even like we're talking not only during work, because work doesn't just end at work, right? It bleeds into the golf course on the weekends. It bleeds to like karaoke at night. Like a lot of deals happen outside the working hours. And that's when you realize like you just don't fit in. And as much as you try, like they don't really want you there. They still see you as a woman. So I guess my biggest advice is to just be yourself and hone on those skill sets because there are a lot of skill sets that are extremely positive. Actually, most of the skill sets um, in work are are considered, you call them yin yang, like feminine traits. And you need both of them in order to advance in the workplace. So my biggest mistake was trying to fit in and trying to, to hone on to more aggressive male dominated traits, which work for a very short term, but in the long term, it doesn't really quite work. And so my biggest advice would be just continue to be yourself, believe in yourself. Um, Women also don't tend to speak up as much Mm -hmm. or ask for things such as like a raise. They just kind of tend to suck it up and just put their heads down and do it. And so I guess the two things would be be yourself and speak up and ask and say things that like, um, that, that provoke, that, that allow you to get ahead, um, whether it's a raise or, uh, 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 wanting to be part of a certain project, like women tend to just not speak up as much. So I would say, speak up and don't, don't be shy about it. There's a label that also often goes around being like, oh, if you speak up, you're going to be bossy. Like who cares? You can be a bossy boss and you just gotta, you've just got to not care and just let it flow. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, you picked up on communication and collaboration uh, as um, like key traits that you may have experienced. How do you see that um, f- uh, fruition into your different fields of your business, uh, d- various businesses? How do you see the importance of that as well as how d- has you being a woman help with that as well, as you mentioned? So I think with every business and maybe that's why I'm able to do so many different types of businesses. It's really a people's game. So you're, it's about managing the right people leading lead, I mean, being able to manage correctly lead in a way that's um, admirable and, and um, adapt to many different types of circumstances that get thrown at you. Cause there's never going to be anything that is going to be stable and sta- stable growth is like, it's a dream. Mm. And especially now in this day and age, like everything is so turbulent, everything is so unstable, everything is so uncertain. So that ability to communicate and collaborate and adapt, um, I see play in so much of everyday's life. And as a woman, I think, um, and I don't mean to stereotype men, but oftentimes in a room, there are there's a lot of ego going along mm. and not as much, um, what, what's the right word? Uh, an ability to just reach a consensus. Everybody kind of wants their own way, but that's really hard to move forward. And the reason I like Dragonfly 360 and what we actually do is called DEI training, um, which is diversity, equity training and inclusivity. It's because everybody has their own opinion. You just need to be able to spot out who's got what strengths to do what and use them at that particular time in order to push ahead more quickly and, and, and further. So those, I think, are really important things that um, collaboration uh, plays a key role in in everything you do, right? In teamwork and even your friends, like you're starting from young almost, like everybody has a different opinion in what they want to do, what they want to eat, what they want to party or whatever it is. But it's about reaching that consensus where everybody feels like they're happy. And that's like a very key strength, I feel, in in everything I do like no one's always right no one's always wrong but it's just more about communicating and figuring out like how do we move forward where everybody is kind of happy with the choices that we're making that's amazing so my next question would be uh how has your leadership style adapted during 
as as we know nowadays everything's moving so fast with uh disruption with covid uh, so many different external factors how has your leadership uh, style adapted to that as well as using uh key things like communication and collaboration or what you do uh to motivate your uh employees how do you use that or what is your style so in the past i would say my leadership style was more I'm leading and people are following. Um, and that works for a while until you burn out because mm. you're, it's a lot of energy to be able to pull so many people behind you. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, much later and, and me realizing that I had burnout and I couldn't continue to do this, that I had to adapt and realize Oh, there's another style of leading, which is you're leading from the middle. So I don't want to say from behind because behind is exhausting too. You can imagine, right? Krish, like pushing, I don't know, 200 to a thousand staff in front. So leading in the middle is a very beautiful thing. And the whole thing about um, Dragonfly 360, we call it leadership and balance. So Mm -hmm. there's the balance of the yin and the yang. And there's also the balance of leading in the middle where you're pushing just enough to, for the, the leaders that matter to be able to be inspired to to have initiation on their own. And at the same time, you're leading by example to people who still need mentoring and and a little bit of um, inspiration, I would say. And and there and maybe they don't have enough experience in order to continue to move ahead. So there, there's a fine balancing act that's happening there. Um, and because I do yoga, I, I love this whole thing about balance where it's it's truly a it's truly a mental balancing game where you know exactly how much to push for the best results. And yep. if that person is not performing their best results, you know exactly when to push them and uh, when to let go and say that that's enough. And yeah. that skill, I think it's also a quite a feminine trait to be able to have that empathy, to understand um, when to push and when to pull. Mm, for sure. So talking yeah. about balance, How do you manage to balance across so many different uh, businesses and projects? You know, I get asked that question a lot. Uh, Actually, the question I get asked a lot is like, how do you do it all? And I tell them like, honestly, there's never doing it all. Anytime I'm giving energy to a certain thing. So I'm not only balancing a few projects and work, I'm also balancing Paro, my Mm. son and my husband and, you know, the help at home too yeah. and my family and my brothers and my parents so there's never there's never doing it all, doing it all i can say that there is balancing it though in in that whatever you're spending time on usually flourishes so at that point in time you just have to choose how to spend the certain amount of time on a particular thing so for me when para was younger um Three o'clock was my cutoff with work. I didn't care. I said three o'clock is when I start spending time with my family because otherwise you can always continue to work and there's never enough and you can always bleed into it. Mm. You know, like you can always make up an excuse. You attended the YPO event. Um, yeah. I think, I don't know if you're YNG, but same thing there. There's always something that can come up that can give you an excuse to say, I can't do this. So huge discipline and huge prioritization is needed in order to to have a more balanced approach. So for me, I've learned to let it go. If certain things don't get done by today, in the past, I'd be like, we got to get this done, no matter what, there's this deadline. Um, Still, certainly there are certain things where there are d- deadlines to be met, but I can give you a quick example. Yesterday, Paro said, can you come with me to his cousin's house? And I said, no, I've got work to do. It was, it was, it was pretty late. I was like, I got to finish this project I don't know if I told you I also I also have an interior design firm oh wow and those guys have like serious deadlines to meet because they're sure. clientele and I said I had this deadline for Baker and McKinsey we needed to do this project and Paul was like you seem really stressed can you just come with me and I said no and he's like well why don't I help you work and I was like and it, it took me a while to realize oh actually you know what I'm just gonna go with him so I spent an hour I went with him to my brother's house his cousin's house and that was the best hour because it made me a step back and not stress. B, uh, 
take that time to just rejuvenate. And it made me come back and be able to finish something that I probably would have taken an hour to do in like 20 minutes because I was just more clear and focused and um, just able to, I, I let it go. And oftentimes that's the other best advice I have is you don't need to do everything right now. You don't need to be Superman or Superwoman and get everything done right now. It is okay to, to prioritize certain things such as quality time with your friends and your family and your children in order to just be a better person. <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to say that I do on a daily basis um, is I meditate. Wow. So I, I do 30 minute meditation every day and it's basically like showering for me. Um, in every essence, like when you shower, you feel clean. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I shower, my mind become, I mean, when I meditate, my mind becomes cleaner and I can't go a day without showering. Just like I can't go a day without meditating. Something feels a bit off when I don't do it. And that's something that I've um, started to do in my practice for the past two, three years. It's been very, it took me eight years to wow. get into it. It's because it's, it seems so simple. But it's really not simple to sit and do nothing for half an for hour. Sure. But it's probably the best thing that has happened to me. Prior to that, I was not sleeping. I had insomnia. I was just constantly stressed. And so that has been a life changer, like a game changer for me. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, I mean, I, I think I should do that. Like kids, they go through so much these days. Before we had books and sports. Now you guys are like on your phone 24 seven and there's so much going in Yeah, that you know, I look and I say like, everyone's going to have like a mental breakdown. Well, like, you know, mental wellness is like the key buzzword these days. And I really want to encourage the younger generation to just sit down and take that break five, 10 minutes a day. That's amazing. Yeah, because I've had my own personal journey with meditation. I mean, it's really, really hard to just sit there and right? sit with your thoughts because we're constantly used to scrolling through Instagram or just going through TikTok. Yeah. So my next question is, what would you recommend or what is your best practice that can help the youth today get into meditation? Um, start small start like baby steps like five minutes 10 minutes daily I mean if you can scroll through Instagram for like an hour a day <laughs> TikTok which I think most young people do because I see them on their phone like in the car whenever there's free in the shower even it's like non-stop yeah I really think that everyone can find 10 minutes to do and it's 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 gonna be hard but think of it this way um are you a monkey because a monkey is, um, if anything, it's the closest species to a human being, but still, you know, you're kind of not fully in control, but as a human, we are probably the only species that can be fully in control of our mind. And yet we're not. So I call it the monkey mind when you're sitting there and it's jumping from one thing to another, to another, and everybody has it. Um, but I would just say that just start small, start with an app. Guided meditation is usually way easier. There's Calm, there's Headspace. There's so many apps out there. You can just even go on YouTube and it's free and just put it in your daily practice. It could be before you go to bed 10 minutes a day and just say that this is something that I commit to doing. Start saying one week and then say two weeks and then say a month. And like anything that becomes like a sport, right? Like once you make it a daily practice then it becomes a daily practice and you can't really live without it but yeah. don't give up just it it took me eight years so just keep at it you know but just view it as like you don't want to have your mind control you you want to be able to control your mind and just that thought alone for me was inspiring enough to be like that's correct like why is something else controlling me versus me being able to control something that is physically a part of me and hopefully that, that yeah you know that's enough of a kick to be like actually yeah you're right I should be able to control my mind you know I can control so many other things in my life why can't I control my mind for sure does that make sense yeah it does because like it we, we are constantly used to so much information being overloaded into our system yeah. like at school on social media so it's nice to take that moment 
to reflect. And for sure, it's going to help in every aspect, not just business, but at home and our personal mental well-being. So I think that's a beautiful note to end with for us to start um, bringing this practice in because often we see business as something that's uh, constantly working, but we never see this other side of it where we have to take the time to put in uh, work with meditation, mindfulness, um, communication, com collaboration, and that whole yin and yang, which is beautiful, I think. And I think it's really nice to see that we're talking about this. It's being talked about more. I see on my Instagram sometimes um, meditation is coming up mu much more than it used to be. So it's really, really nice to hear. So thank you so much for coming today on this episode. I have no doubt you're going to make an amazing leader. So if you can spread that word, meditation actually makes you makes me a better leader for sure, because it makes me more mindful and it makes you take a step back because you're so used to go, go, going. Mm. But I have no doubt you're going to go amazing places. So don't forget to slow down from time to time. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, Krish. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>